Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Ryan O'Sullivan, the winner of Hell's Kitchen season 22. Ryan, you have to tell me, what was it like when the door opened, the confetti, confetti's pouring down, you know, tell me how you felt. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, it was two years ago and I still don't believe it's real. It <laughs> happened two years, I still find it very hard to, to resonate with it. Um, you know, the, the, the emotions came pouring out. Uh, it was bittersweet because, you know, not many people would say that they enjoyed their time in Hell's Kitchen. You know, if I could go back and do it again in the morning, I would. Um, it was, you know, phenomenal. Um, you know, I still didn't, we didn't know who was go, whose door was going to open. It, it was it was never a time once where I thought, this is it. I definitely won. I definitely have it. You know, neither of us knew. Neither of us, neither of us knew how each other's service went. Um, we just talked about it vaguely. But, I mean, the feeling still, you know, right now I'm still on air, you know. I don't think I'll ever come down from this. And people don't realize that you this has to be prepared months in advance and it's filmed months in advance and in sometimes even years like this. So how hard is that then to to hold on to that? I mean, you you have this experience. You can't really talk about it. You can't talk about it at all. And you know what I'll tell you? It's been harder to keep this secret than it was working for Gordon Ramsay. I'm telling you, <laughs> because it's very hard to give it away and you can't give too much away because when people ask you, they know that you were missing off the face of the earth for six or seven weeks. People are going to ask questions about where you were. And then once you mention, oh, you know, I was doing a TV show. What TV show? You can't really go into detail about it. You can't tell anybody about it. You know, people then see you on his kitchen and then you're like, you know, well, did you win? You can't tell anybody. And so I just always, I always told people, you know, ah, you know, I made it far enough. You know, I, I could never say I didn't win or I came second because people then, you know, would write stuff about it. So I always just say I made it far enough. Um, you know, very tough to keep a secret, but, you know, I got it's out now. And, um, you know, obviously this is the day before it's going to come out the next day, but it's, um, you know, still very, very hard to, to sit with me. It's an amazing feeling. And I always believed in myself, but, you know, once the door opened, I still kind of didn't believe it. I still don't. I still don't until I actually see it properly myself. <laughs> and it was an extra special moment because your dad was there and you'd never cooked for him before. So what was it like to have your dad show up? That was sort of a surprise, wasn't it? Oh, 100%. I mean, they told us that they weren't able to bring any family. Unfortunately, due to COVID and circumstances, they weren't able to fly anybody's families in. And I said, look, you know, that's fair enough. I kind of expected that. You know, I wasn't, you know, getting my hopes up that I might see my mom or my dad or my wife even. Um, and then when my wife came, I'm like, look, hey, there's one of, the, one of them is there to make sense. Jen's already in the States. It's easy to get her here. There was no way I was going to believe that they were going to fly my mom or my dad, you know, from Ireland in, in the space of a night because it was, all, it was all the next day. You know what I mean? It was... They must have got a phone call. You're going to have to be on a flight right now. You need to get on a flight and come. So, you know, to, to see my dad walk through those doors was very special for me. And not only that, to cook for my dad is Gordon Ramsay is also his idol. And for me to be the catalyst of my dad to meet his idol too, is the icing on top and on top for me. You know, they, they say never meet your idol or your hero. I mean, it was the complete opposite for me. You know what I mean? And to, to, for my dad to meet his hero too because of me makes it extra special. And to cook for him, I mean... Way back when, I think the most thing I ever cooked for him, I, I made him a cereal once or twice with some milk. That was about it. Um, and he was happy with that. Um, but, you know, whatever we were doing together was going to be fantastic. Um, and for him to watch me cook and to create my menu and to execute my menu and lead the kitchen, um, it's something that the both of us will never forget. What was it like working with Gordon Ramsay and having him as a mentor throughout that process? Oh, it was a dream come true. It was an absolute dream come true, you know. I've, I've watched that man's every move for, you know, 20 years. You know, I'm 10, 9, 10, 11. It wasn't Dexter's Lab or it wasn't, you know, Keenan and Kelly on the TV for me. It was, you know, cooking shows because that's all my dad watched. And um, I was interested by them. I was intrigued by them. No, it wasn't just Gordon Ramsay, but there was a lot of other chefs. But, you know, that's really sparked my uh, my interest in cooking. And, you know, when I finally got to meet him, I remember the first episode where everybody was in those boxes. It was Oscar De La Hoya. There was another couple of people. And then Gordon was last. I remember seeing him and like, it was all, it was like all my Christmases came together at once. You know, my eyes lit up. I, I could feel myself welling up, but not, not because I was angry or sad or happy. It was like, I just can't believe I'm meeting, meeting my idol. He's standing right in front of me. He, you know, it's, it's a crazy, crazy experience. But the second I met him and I put on my jacket, I knew, no, this is where the job opportunity starts. I got to put my, my starstruck self aside, stardom, you know, he's in front of me. Doesn't matter. He's going to be my future boss. Now it's time to work. And I think the the switch for me to be able to turn that away from, okay, now I'm in front of my idol, but now it's, it could potentially be my future boss. I need to forget about him as as he, who he is and just look at him purely as my future boss. 
at what age did you know you wanted to pursue this kind of career? Because it's, I mean, it's blue collar work. It's tough. It's sweat and tears. Um, so what, who was that kid in Ireland and what led you then to the States? Was it Florida that you came to? Yeah, Florida is where I uh, resided first. So, I mean, like growing up, I come from two big blue collar families. My mother is one of 15. My dad is one of 12. You know, no TVs in Ireland back then, you know, and um, it was, you know, big family orientated place. Everybody was out grafting every single day. You know, the the ethos that we were, were drilled into us as kids is, you know, no matter what's wrong with you, you got to get up and go to work. You got to provide, you got to make sure that the bills are paid. You got to make sure that you're on time, make sure that, you know, you're respectable and presentable. And I think that from a very young age and, you know, growing up in an old school like your family, that's kind of drilled into you that no matter what you do, you do it with pride and you do it to the best of your ability. Um, so very much so grew up in a in a blue collar blue collar background, and I was never really good at anything. I mean anything, whether it be sports or running or like just I was never good at anything. I really wasn't. I was always picked last for stuff. You know, I was just that goofy kid in the corner that was no. I was always funny. You know, I was always well able to speak. Um, I was always funny, and it was just you know for me when I was able to you know sit down and really pursue a career in cooking is when I wanted to, to you know, be the best I could because my parents didn't want me to become a chef. They said, you love your social life too much. You're never going to get up early in the morning. You're not going to put the hours in. You know, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to be the best you possibly can. And that for me kind of lit a fire under my ass as, as to say, I, you know, that was for me to go out and, you know, be the best chef I possibly could. So, I mean, I'd say probably from the age of maybe, you know, 12 or 13 is when I started taking a real interest in it. Um, you know, my dad had a couple of small time restaurants back home and I, you know, go into the kitchen with him, see how things worked. You know, for me, it was like sharp knives, big ice creams, you know, all the good things that you see. You know, you don't see the bad stuff that happens in kitchens. Not that it's all bad, but, you know, being in kitchens and culinary school, it doesn't prepare you for the real world, especially when you're coming into the industry. Um, at about 15 or 16, then, you know, I started work, working as a dishwasher. It's where all great chefs start, I believe. I uh, worked as a dishwasher for tr two or three years and then, you know, I went to culinary school. Um, and then just got straight into the kitchen. I never actually finished culinary school, believe it or not, because I worked for this really, really old school French chef. And, you know, I worked for him for six months over the summer. And he told me, he said, look, you can go back to school and college and you can pay for it. And you can waste money. He said, but I guarantee you, I'll teach you more in six months than you learn in five years in college. He was like, you know, do you want to get your foot into the industry? He told me he saw a lot in me at the time. And I think, you know, he might have talked me down off the ledge because he didn't want to let, let me go and find a replacement. But you know, I'm kind of glad that I stuck with him because, you know, he really taught me a lot about the industry. Um, You know, he was an old, old guy and, you know, he's old school in his ways. And I believe that, you know, I'm an old French chef stuck in a young Irish man's body. Um, and I like to I like to keep it that way, too, because having the old ways of stuff, the old way of doing stuff and the old techniques, you know, it's just a way to go with cooking. There's a lot of modernized stuff, but at the same time, you know, old school is the best way. I do firmly believe, especially when it comes to cooking. Heading into that final challenge, um, you had to pick teams and you you didn't make it like easy on yourself. I mean, you you had Sammy. She was third place. So that was like a great pick right from the start. Um, but then Jason was sort of a controversial pick. You poked fun at him a little bit. You and you and Jonathan throughout the season, you didn't always see eye to eye with Jason. Um, so why did you pick him second? Why were you so confident about that? And then how were you able to pull this team together and, and pull off this? successful dinner service um so to be honest with you it doesn't really matter what happens in the kitchen because if your true chefs know that whatever happens in the kitchen stays in the kitchen whatever happens it doesn't matter you know we could it's still to this day i could throw pots and pans at people in five minutes say you got to get over it that's the kitchen industry you know you can't work with a grudge you can't um you can't hold anything back and just because me and jason never got along didn't mean that he wasn't a phenomenal chef i knew what jason's strengths were i knew what sammy's strengths were i knew what sandra's strengths were and i knew what carmen's strengths were I've been following them throughout the whole season. I knew where they were good. I knew what positions they were good in. I listened to them when they talked about their services. I prepared for all this. I was taking mental notes the whole time. The whole time everybody was telling me about, I rocked out fish station last night. I rocked out garnish, appetizers. I killed it. I knew full well where to put people. You know, and that's the thing is that may, I may not have chose my best friends to work on my team, but I definitely chose the best chefs for those positions. And that's what being a leader is about. It's about knowing where to put people in certain circumstances. It's about delegation because delegation is the key to success. Um, you know, take nothing away from Jason. Yeah, you know, he's a bit of a dick. That's fine. You know, it, most chefs do have that streak in them. And that's what makes great chefs good because they're setting their ways and they know what they're good at. I knew Jason knew to what rock a grill, surf and turf, cook steaks all day long. And that was the position he chose. 
And even I told him, I said, I chose you because you're great, not because we're best friends. You know what I mean? I told you because I know how good you can be. And as you probably saw from the clips, you know, I would draw a little, uh, a little self, a little portrait of Jason on the, uh, on the, on the prep board before we went in, just to, you know, take the tension off. <laughs> um, and of course, then you go on to win, and we talked about that great moment. But on the other side of that, Jonathan's door does not open, and you guys have this friendship now. So, what what was it like being in the best moment of your life, and then now seeing your best friend kind of crushed while your dream is being lived out? <clears throat> Well, to be honest with you, me and Johnny made a pact. You know, it's a great question. Me and Johnny made a pact that said, whoever walks through that door, it doesn't matter because we're both going to the top. I'm not going to do anything without Johnny, you know, moving forward and like we're going to do something together 100%. Regardless of who won and who didn't win, we're both winners in this. You know what I mean? I made I made friends with a guy in three weeks that I feel like I know my entire life. Like we clicked from the get-go. We talk to each other more than we talk to our wives. It's scary. You know, it's, it's absolutely scary. But... Like that, when you form a friendship like that, it's almost like trauma bonding. You know what I mean? Like we were both there for the same same reasons. We both want the same thing, but we're both just as happy to see each other succeed. You know, I didn't get you know when when I went through the door and I walked out. You know, I wanted to go back and get get uh, Johnny, but you know, Gordon was like, "No, go downstairs. You got to go downstairs." He was, you know, prompting me to to walk down. Um, but I wish I got more time to you know talk about Johnny and stuff like that. But we will, you know, be definitely doing something in the future. And you know, obviously, you know. I walk through the doors, but I do believe that we're both winners in the end of it all. I think Johnny might say the same. What's your favorite dish to cook? God, I get asked this question a lot, man. I really do. And I don't really have a favorite dish to cook, but it's going to be, it's you know, it's 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 a, something simple for me is it always goes back to my childhood, you know? Um, a simple potato dish, you know, with some well-cooked steak, you know, you can't beat a, you know, an old school demi-glass. I'm a simple man when it comes down to it. I really am. You know, you give me, you know, I talked to a, another station this morning. They said, you know, what's your favorite thing to eat? You give me a bowl of well, you know, well cooked mashed potatoes and gravy. I'm a happy man. You know, I don't want to sound too too cliche with that, but it's comfort for me. And you know, I love feeding people. I love the the industry for what it is. You know, I adore making pasta. I love you know finicky things, not just putting stuff in a pan. I love creating things with my hand. You know, stuff from doughs, baking breads, anything that you know really has unique technique to do. I love that. You know, so I mean. Probably the favorite things to make is pasta, raviolis. I love it. Um, favorite food to make, you know, you know anything that reminds me of home. Really, I can't really put a finger on that one. And then, what would be the food that you would much rather order at a restaurant than prepare yourself? Uh, food I'd always order at a restaurant is something I've never had. Something that I've never had always. It doesn't matter. I'd never, I'd never go to a restaurant and order a steak. Never, because nine times out of ten, I could probably, you know, it depends where I am. I could probably do better at home or, you know, it's, it's, it's something I'd never, I'd never order a steak at a restaurant just because, um, because of that fact. But, you know, usually something I've never had, uh, a sauce I've never had, or, you know, a technique I didn't know, um, or even a simple garnish, you know, if it's just something on the menu that I don't know what it is, or I haven't tasted, I always order that. Um, I do have a habit of ordering for the table. So I do order a lot of food at a restaurant and no matter who's with me, um, you know, people will always say, oh, is that for the table? I say, no, it's not for me, but it's for everybody. I like to try everything at the table. A uh, big seafood guy. Um, you know, always love crudos, anything raw. I'm a big fan of, of um, tartars and crudos. Um, so I always try to go for something raw in a, in a menu. I can't imagine you having an opinion on what we order at dinner. I, I mean, that just sounds crazy. It's right. Absolutely <laughs> insane. <laughs> yeah, always. Uh, Ryan, congratulations. It was such a fun season. It was it was a pleasure to watch it play out the way it did and and see how you and Jonathan finished it out together. Congratulations. We'll look forward to to whatever your future holds. I'm sure it'll be huge. And thanks for chatting with Gold Derby today. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time to reach out, guys. This has been so much fun. I can't wait to do it again. Mm -hmm.